Here we go then on Nimbus. Single power up map there. Does have two yellows this time, the Mega and the Red. One. Key weapons ever ever. Lightning gun and rail. Let's switch around to sharp off the start. Getting that shotgun spawn and straight down to the mega health. Blue teams are I feel like off initial spawns, there's no, nobody's going to have perfected what the best route is yet to the major key items. But sharp's done a pretty decent job of getting himself a weapon and the mega health. Takes a chunk of rocket damage. You might get the frag there and hit no though. Yeah, good recovery because it kind of messed that fight up at the start, sharp, but. Picked up a fairly clean kill in the end. Team Evolution look like they're going to try and take control of this red. Nobody quite wants to grab it at first though until Sharp grabs it. There's that first power up spawn. And Hypnoid has managed to grab. He hasn't got any weapons to work with. Lightning Gun is available. There you go. Team that dropped it for oh, him. Oh, perfect timing for that second Mega of the map to spawn up. He's going to take this jump route up high into the red room. Just hunting for the kills. And you can pick up a lot of kills wow. on this map. Surprised he hasn't seen anyone yet. I was like, where that else they got? Very gone? good defensive rail. It's going to find it difficult to rush in. But the second rail by Demaya wasn't actually at the quad. And he could counter that pretty effectively. He's now got a rail gun to his name as well. Oh, oh my god. That shotgun, that was clutch. Sharp had to hit all of that and he did. Very heavy shotgun there. He's got himself a yellow armor and a rocket launcher now, Sharp. And Mega will be up in a second. It's perfectly timed that to drop down on it. Of course, timing items such a major feature of modern day play in Quake Live. Team Deathmatch and Duel, especially. One, well, the personal responsibility for timing items in TDM now that we don't have coaches, which were obviously so prevalent in Quake 3, all the top teams had coaches. So important. I mean, so many teams space their entire tactics of controlling major items. He's sharp, just pushed back there. That's really good defensive play. I mean, they were not going to let him into that room. He couldn't bully his way through that doorway. Yeah, and a good decision to back off as well. You know, some players, they kind of try and force positions that aren't ideal, and he knew when it was right to back off. Trying to chase this frag down. He might just wait for the yellow. This is good work from Sharp. This team keeping control of the mega and the yellow armor. As we just talked about, the key items keeping control gets a simple frag there. Good rocket damage as well. Could do with some support. Came in a little bit late. Maybe though, out on top of this, you don't need to rocket jump up there, but he does try to go switch around to see anybody inside this room. Demaya, well, he's eliminated, is leading up to quad. Following on Teza, he tries to rocket jump up. Looks like they have secured this though, plan B. Throws himself up on sharp. Hate me, lightning gun in hand, rocket launcher as well. Here's the quad grab from Hate me. And now he can push into this lower area. Does just miss out on the Mega. So he had to take it in front of his opponent. This is going to be a risky one. <laughs> Managed to get the Telefrag onto Maya. Oh, first rail. Second rail could come in and take him out. It misses the shots, though. He mate cleans up that rail gunner, though. run in the end, just that one before he went down. Yeah, he won't be too happy with that run, hate me, but, you know, sometimes it is luck of the draw. I mean, where you meet players, you can't always know where they're going to be, but it's probably a, a little bit more of an effective route to take than the one he did take. That's something that will come in time. People will get Teams way more effective at one, um, executing quad runs, and then two, evading quads, so we get a kind of cycle. Yeah, and if your luck is in on this map, when it comes to running the quad, you can rack up some ridiculous frag runs. Hypnoid taking up a very good position with this rail. I mean, look at the damage the player's going to take to get into this room. That's a good rush, two players on one, but they did sacrifice one death to get in there. Grab that rail gun, and Fear's picking up a second with the shotgun. Paul Ben Range as well, as I'm looking at some of his stats. 60% rail at the moment. Second impressive, hasn't had too many shots on the board at the moment. Oh, that's good railing though. Helping his teammates secure that red. Fears has done a great job. Well, Tessa's wow, hitting jumping everything. For red. Strange, 80% yeah. rail now for Fears. And this is such a good position to have a rail gun in. Yeah, this shots. is the position we saw, who was it the other day, low flying, make good use of. It's high position. But getting knocked off isn't such a good feeling. Wasn't it being really effective there? Five seconds to go until the quad can be the only position at the moment, and this is what Team Evo can't afford to do just rush in mindlessly. Trying to grab it last second, you really want to set these hands up. And we saw the other day as well, the quad is eliminated by Team Evolution, though. 
that, but we did see the other day, very much like Campground, the way you can play one. Yeah, exactly. You don't always have to overcommit to it. If you think that you've got good items, good weapons, you can just elect to sit back and try and rail it. You know, we've seen the numerous positions you can take up and get good angles on the quad pickup, and just you can just rail it. Just yeah. rail it and don't commit anything to the fight, and you retain armor, retain weapons, and ideally you kill the quad. Silent set gave us a masterclass in that for low flyer the other day. Let's see, Fears caught up that bounce pad pretty badly, so I was, oh my god, what a great rocket! I think he was just trying to chuck out a spam rocket that just happened to hit his opponent as he dropped perfectly into his eye line. They do have two red armor stack players running around the map now, Plan B. They are one frag behind, we've seen this before, a previous map. Team Evolution started off well, around six minutes mark. Plan B started to get control of the red. Yeah, in the first map, they just they upped their aggression level around the map. They they weren't as willing to just sit back, and if they start doing the same again, it'll be interesting to see if Team Evolution are able to react to it this time. There's that red armor. Alteza grabbing that red. Serboz is showing us exactly what you should do. I mean, he hasn't really encountered anybody, but the key is, the longer you last with the armor, the more people in your team have armor, the more threat you are as a whole. So if you can do ranged damage, a couple of players with the early armor, that's that's excellent work. You do need to balance that with the fact that you need to win over certain positions. Here's the next red for Serboz, moving up to 10 seconds before the quad. He might not be in the best position for it though, taking a, a very uh, unusual route, going into the lower area. He's going to make it, but is he just going to make it in time? He might actually stiff it. No, he can't. I didn't think he would make wow. it. Wow. Okay. Look at that, sharp, picking up a direct rocket long range on the pillar there. That'll help the damage stats. Of course, quad is three times damage. A direct rocket would be 100 damage. Only so 300 damage on the board for sharp there in one shot. Oh, look at that. That's very good evasion play. Sharp would have had to hit some kind of insane instant shot as he went around there. He's going aggressive, does that? Oh, Altez yeah. counters him. Nice to pick up a kill at the end, as long as someone can pick up those drop weapons. But, you know, when you get hit by a shot like Shark just did, it kind of just does kill all the momentum in your quad run. And you are left thinking, what do I do now? Because I'm not really strong enough to just push in. And, you know, we saw at the end that even though he picked up a kill, he was killed at the same time. And that's really why you need to have an objective mindset when you're running a quad. It's not really about kills always, but about winning over the areas and securing the key items. Yeah, and on a map like this, of course, one of the, if, you know, if your team is holding red, then you head to the red, clean that out, and then look to possibly take one of the, you know, major contested items on the map, the rail, just make sure that's clear as well. It was, it was um, stop mid-flow at the rail, so it's not like he didn't have some kind of objective route, but that's just why it's important. Rather than just hunting for kills, if you are stopped dead in your tracks, you need to have a focus on where you're going to move, because every second with a quad is precious. If I hate me just running so the, the back side of the map, I'd probably call it. Usually the emptier areas, the bits where you can stack up and back off. Yeah, he's kind of being cautious at the moment, because he has good weapons. He just needs a bit of health, some armor would be nice. Pretty, you know, pretty unfortunate there. The entire Team Evolution team turned up at the same time, of course. That's pretty good play from Team Evolution because it's quad timer, though. Oh, Zerbo's coming in the back there with the rocket launcher. Could secure out this quad. Excellent play from him. Oh, can't really shoot his teammate getting in the way there. But he does manage to pick up two frags already. Yeah, they've come a well way from that. What was quite a messy fight, but they came out on top of it. So you've got 36 ammo with this. 15 seconds before red can't really waste too much time waiting around there. Empty rail room. Oh my god, he's going to catch two of them in the back here. Wow. I wouldn't say that's the best evasion play ever from Team Evolution. No, and to drop a rail there wasn't ideal either. I mean, obviously shouldn't have had it out. Being harsh maybe, but giving away important weapons like that. Well, it's a, it, I mean, there's always certain routes you take. I wouldn't probably be playing around that zone. Quad on the run, especially on this map, it's so easy to get to the quad area, and you're very, I mean, you're stuck in a very open area against a quad. So I probably would have been backing off to be tight as every map and get a rocket player in the distance. Well, backing off two of them. using the rail assistance. Yeah. 
exactly. Look at this play by DM. Excellent. Rocket play gets his third. Excellent with the map. Yeah, this is great. Kills. He's just repaired the damage of the previous quad, basically. 60% rail for him at the moment as he waits for that weapon. He's only got one rocket. He's going to grab himself a little bit of ammo there. And there's that red. And he's going to demand that despite only 27 health. Has to be cautious then as a result. And his opponent presumably knows he's weak because he's gone really aggressive on him. Oh my god. That turns out to be a pretty wasted red armor. Yeah, it was. He needed health before looking to fight. And you could see he was choosing to try and disengage from the fight. But Plan B weren't having any of that. They just pursued him relentlessly. Almost like you said on the previous map, they went aggressive and worked out. It paid off two seconds ago before this quad hit. Boy's in a good position to defend it. In fact, Servos, who seems to be stacking himself up pretty effectively. For oh, the, the Mega's coming up as well. Possibly doesn't have the timing on it. Doesn't even need it, though. No, he doesn't. 85 odd army, he's got a shotgun. And if they're going to run into him, he's not going to need any extra stack, is it? There's the red army, he went back for that perfect timing. This is a very good opportunity. 12 frags in advantage now, Plan B, and they just look a little bit more organized than Team Evolution. Yeah, they are. I mean, it is, that is what's putting them ahead in this so far, because if we look at the items, there's really not much between either team, and in fact, Plan B have taken less items overall. We saw that on the previous map as well. So here's the next red. That's going to put it 14-12 in favour of Team Evolution on the red. But we see Plan B is starting to bring that back. They're ahead on the yellows and just one behind on the megas, Team Evo. So the big difference here, two minutes of quad to 28 seconds. That's yeah, five to one on the quad pickups. Certainly on this map, this is a map where you can't really be giving away that amount of time on the quad. Because we've seen, you know, not all of their runs, Plan B, but I'd say... Out of their four runs, maybe two, maybe two and a half of them were great runs. Sorry, five runs they've had. And that's enough to give them, you know, the frag advantage that they have now. So Servos picks up another red. Seems like he's got great control of that red position and the Team Evolution need to, well, they've eliminated him now before they've got 30 seconds. They need to grab a bit more of those reds, a bit of more control, but the key is, I mean, because they've had so few quads, and it's not a massive difference between the two teams, 12 frags is pretty much nothing on this map, you can probably get six, you know, with quad, so never mind the conversions from your teammates. So they, if they just have a strong focus on this next quad, try and win it back into the second half of the map now, of course. Fears seem to be the only guy for a second there who was. Team Evolution all attacking from the same side. I mean, it's never the best plan. Alteza, though, is eliminated, and DM's done the right thing there. He's protected his rail and taken out the quad. He's now evaded back to the red armor, so that's a very nice play from DM. Yeah, important that they got that kill there. They couldn't afford, really, even though we're, we still have a good amount of time left in this map, they couldn't afford to have another quad run, you know, picking up four or five kills. Whoa, good dodge. I mean, the problem is, even though you might have time to come back into it. When you start seeing a much bigger score gap between you and your opponents, you start to try and make those frags back and rush it and don't stick to your tactics. You maybe go aggressive when you should be a bit more defensive and then you start losing more frags and it just suddenly all falls away from you. So it's a good position to be in taking out that quad at this point. But they really do need some quad snowballs. Yeah, definitely. It's, you'd think they'd need maybe two good quad runs in what we have left of this map to come back into this. And they can come back without them, but I think it'll be difficult for them to do so. Well, we see this. DM has taken the red, but I mean, we saw the aggression all the time from Plan B. He's actually turned out to be in a great position because he's picked up... Oh, that first rocket was pretty unfortunate. It didn't actually catch out Hate Me. But he was in a great position there with his red armor, with the lightning gun. He was just helping up. If he'd hit that first rocket and hate me, it would have been a tremendous position. We see how aggressive they are straight away, Plan B, inside that red room. And you feel like we saw Servos in there just getting three reds before when they had control of it, Plan B. So, a bit of a difference between the aggression of the two teams. Altair's a seventh impressive. He has secured out the railgun. Maybe for a teammate? Doesn't look like anybody's coming. Just take it for the ammo. A few seconds before the quad, he's in a good defensive position. Range, only one person there from Team Evo to kill. Well, Unless we miss the action. Easy quad grab. 
Well, either way, I mean, if there was only one, and to say if there was more than one, everybody on Plan B must have survived out of the fight, so... Five minutes more. Not a great attack on the quad. It's a 20 frag margin now. Quad still in the hands of Alteza moving into this red armor. The red armor is up. That's a good rocket from DM. We see some good rocket play from him in this red armor area. But it's not enough to stop the red armor grab from the quad carry Alteza. And it's looking very similar to the first map, or in the way it's Yeah, it is. I mean, every, everything that you see, you know, in terms of aggressive play and you know, pushing as a team into areas and effectively winning over areas, it's all coming from plan B at the moment. eliminated and although to you Evo have taken over control of this red they're not in great defensive positions on that ground floor Demaya who we're following has only got six health in 57% rail and we haven't seen too much rail play from him and that's an excellent opportunity with the timeout to have a look at the scoreboard Demaya minus 24 net I'm feeling that this kind of map doesn't necessarily suit his style of play at all. No, maybe it's, maybe it's the speed, I don't know. I mean, we know how solid of an aimer he is, but I don't know, sometimes Prepare I get the feeling that fight. faster maps aren't Three, necessarily two, suited one. to his play style. Playing that long range rocket, that was such a great play face rocket. Second rocket as well, but he's run right onto a grenade from a teammate. And you kind of get that feeling, nothing going right. There's still time to get back into this. Though. There's two quads remaining. This could be an excellent comeback if they can grab this. We see DM with a red pickup. He dives straight into Serbos at the spawn. And look at that. He's left with only 58 health. No. Yeah, that's that can't really happen. You have to pick up a kill cleaner than that. And he was punished by just getting railed from distance after it. Plan B have taken over the red right before it spawns. They have been rewarded with that item as well. Look at that. 12 impressive for him. 50% rail. His rail play has been superb. And here we go. Plan B again. Alteza with the quad grab. Easy frag on fears. We get that lightning gun. Nice little light jump up to the top to take out Sharp. We haven't seen much of actually since the start of the map. Fear's going to go down. He's looking uh, ominous now, Hall. Yeah, it certainly is. I think I don't really think there's any way back from here. In Altex has had both of the last two quads, I think, and you know, he's done a good enough job with them, and I think he's put the game beyond Team Evo's reach. Here's Hayley with the yellow army in the quad room. Lightning gun in hand as well. He's got every weapon but the rail. The difference between the two teams for me has been the aggression. I mean, we've seen Team Evolution play a decent game in parts, but sometimes they've just been a little bit tepid. Yeah, absolutely. It's Plan B's willingness to put pressure on Team Evo in positions where you know, they would not be doing the same to Plan B. It feels you like know, they, they aren't getting comfortable red armor pickups. They aren't getting comfortable pickups of any major item. It doesn't look like. It feels like there's more of a solid, maybe even more simplistic game plan to Plan B. It's just like if we don't have red, let's all go and get red. Let's win it and do it now. Whereas Team Evolution, I mean, we've seen them control red, but they've always been under pressure. We've seen Serbos, we just saw them free red. Runs across half the map before he meets anybody. You know, there's no real pressure when they have the red. He gets get caught out by a great rocket from Sharp there. He could do with some more rails in 66% there. Looks like he's going to secure the final quad for his team. Can we see a world record quad run to win them oh, the map? 18 frags. There's one. No, he's not going to get 18, obviously, with the quad, but he can pick up kills. His teammates can convert those kills. There's the rail. Is it too tempting? It isn't. He, in fact, completely ignores it because the frags are probably quite wise. Does get four frags in this run. Maybe if he'd got more quads earlier on. Look at this. Pretty unfortunate he just ran out as he met the bulk of his opponents. Well, that was their second quad of the game. And I think on a map like this where 
Yeah, there's only one power-up, but it's such a dominant power-up on this map, you, you can't afford to be taking two and letting your opponents have over three minutes of quad time. Yeah, I think Team Evolution, I mean, they've been rising for the last few seasons, but they're still not quite there. They do change their squads quite often. Introducing new players is probably just what's stopping them really hit that Euro Cup level. And no doubt, if they play in the Open Cup, they will get to the finals, or to the latter parts at least, so strong team. But today looks like Plan B. You're going to be your victors and make it into the Clan Base Euro Cup 26 group stage. Yeah, impressive performance for them because, you know, I thought, you know, going into these qualifiers, this was one of the tightest, but the plan B to take Team Evolution 2 to 0, that's an impressive statement from them. And you know, who knows what they can do in the Euro Cup?